And there we are. Okay. So the five properties of parallelograms. First property of a parallelogram is the opposite sides are parallel to each other. That's what this picture means. Okay. You have to understand what each of these pictures mean. Because I'm going to leave them on the board because they're going to cover a couple different sections in here. But you have to understand what my markings mean because I'm not going to explain what my markings mean during a test. Curtis, lid, shut. Okay, so these markings mean both pairs of opposite sides are parallel to each other. That's the definition of a parallelogram. A quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. This means that if it's a parallelogram, both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. What does this mean? Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Are these two angles congruent? No. They're supplementary. Consecutive angles are supplementary. So these two angles are supplementary. These two angles are supplementary. These two angles are supplementary. And these two angles are supplementary. Okay? Consecutive angles are supplementary. Okay? So that's what this means. Opposite angles are congruent. And this means the diagonals bisect each other. The diagonals split each other in half. So, first one on the board here. If, a, if it's a parallelogram, then opposite sides are congruent. So, if opposite sides are congruent, how do we figure out what X is? What would you do? 4X equals 5X minus 3. Solve it. What do we do to each side? We could subtract 4X. I'm going to take a shortcut. I'm going to subtract 5X. So I go negative x equals negative 3. If negative x equals negative 3, what does a positive x equal? Positive 3. So x is 3, so that's 12. 5 times 3 is 15, minus 3 is 12. That's 12. Makes sense. Put in 3 here. 2 times 3 is? 6 plus 12 is? 7 times 3 is 21, minus 3 is? Look at that. Opposite sides are congruent, aren't they? Okay. All right. Consecutive angles are supplementary. So if consecutive angles are supplementary, and we know angle A is 66, what's every other angle? What's angle B? You have calculators in front of you. What's angle B? 114. What's angle C? 66. What's angle D? Okay. Consecutive angles are supplementary. Opposite angles are congruent. Okay, this one is talks about the opposite angles being congruent. So, this one says, angle 2 is twice the measure of angle 1. We want to know what angles 1, 2, and 3 are. So angle 2 is twice the measure of angle 1. Angle 2 talks about itself in terms of angle 1. So angle 1 gets its own variable. Angle 1 is x. So how big would angle 2 be if it's twice as big? 2x. What do we know about these two angles? They are supplementary. x plus 2x equals 180. 3x equals 180. Divide by 3 x equals 60. x equals 60. So angle 1 is 60. Angle 2 is 120. Angle 3 is 120. Okay? <laughs> Diagonals bisect each other. They split each other in half. Okay? That talks about splitting each other in half. So, if AE is 4... And BE is 2. How long is EC? EC, 4. ED, 2. How long is AC? 8. How long is BD? 4. All right. You're using a stamper and going boom, 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 and so on. I wonder if Hodgen heard that. Probably did. Okay? How many times can you stamp across that piece of paper? Let's figure it out. If this is 4 down here, what's this up here? 4. Okay? 
No, so BX is 4. What's 1.5 times BX? 1.5 times 4. Six. And so how long's XC? Six. So how long's AC? Twelve. So if this is twelve, the width of the stamper is twelve. Then if you have sixty, how many stamps can you go across there with? Five. Sixty divided by twelve is five. That's the types of things you'll be doing today. Parallelograms, consecutive angles are supplementary, opposite angles are congruent, opposite sides are congruent, um, diagonal.